Man, you guys are alert. You're awake. You're ready to go this morning. Thank you for that. Uh, welcome to Capital City Church. My name is Pastor Rick, and I'm happy you're here today. If you're joining us online, I'm really excited that you're here as well. Um, we live in crazy times that get a little crazier as we go, don't we? The uh, news just continues to surprise us as we see events unfold in the world around us. And maybe um, if you've been watching the news or paying attention to events of the weekend, you know that uh, yet we had another um, strange and crazy uh, thing happen, you know, an assassination attempt on a former president and opinions flying all over the place and news uh, uh, media outlets going crazy. And there's just a ton of confusion, a ton of anger. Um, maybe you feel the same way. And, you know, I've been praying for you and we as a church family have been talking a lot about how it is we're supposed to conduct ourselves in the middle of, um, of a world, of a society, of a time when our country couldn't be more divided, it appears, and when sometimes personal relationships, uh, you know, are fractured, sometimes families fall apart over issues like politics, and even as principled as they are, churches sometimes split, and, um, you know, it can just bring out the worst in people. And what I want to do as we get started, and I certainly didn't plan to do this, but I just want us to take a minute and I want us to pray. And I want us to pray for peace in our country. And what I really have been burdened over just the last 12 hours or so for is to pray for you and to pray for Christians everywhere. And um, my prayer is, is that we won't lose our witness in the middle of a time when can be viewed by some as chaotic or can be viewed as opportunity. And the Apostle Paul talks about how the gospel is best seen in times of weakness, in times of dependence, in times where we don't know exactly what we should do next. And so I'm excited personally that even though we're going to go through over the next few months, um, times that are probably going to try our patience and um, maybe make us question what's going around, on around us and perhaps even wondering if God's paying attention or if he cares. I believe that if we're wise, that if we're spirit led, that if we're paying attention, that God will give you unique opportunities to nudge people around you toward the gospel, toward Jesus. And Jesus is the solution for what we're dealing with in our world today, in our country today. So I don't know how you feel. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if you even know what's going on, but um, today I think prayer is an appropriate response. And, you know, we ask ourselves the question as a Christian, you know, am I supposed to be angry? Am I supposed to be militant? Am I supposed to be involved? Am I supposed to be aggressive and wage a one person war? Or the opposite perspective would be, well, you know, I'm just so frustrated and disillusioned that I'm just not going to do anything at all. I'm just going to bury my head, you know, in the sand and, and just not participate. And I understand why a person could arrive at either conclusion, but the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And to be first a citizen of the kingdom of God, and second, a citizen of the United States of America, being a Christian who happens to be a citizen of the United States of America brings with it some responsibility as well as it does opportunity. I think we have the responsibility to be informed, to be principled, to vote our conscience. I believe we have the obligation never to make issues personal and attack people and character regardless of what a person may stand for. And that's a slippery slope. It's a fine edge. It's a line that's so easy to cross because passion propels us toward, well, overstepping. And I was thinking about this morning as I was reading and preparing to talk to you about Jesus when he was being tried and he was before Pilate. You read about this in the book of John. And Pilate said, what's this kingdom all about that you say that you're in charge of? Should I be afraid of it? Is it gonna be a challenge to my authority? And Jesus answered him and he said, you know, if my kingdom were of this world, my disciples would be fighting you. We'd be at war. But he said, my kingdom is not of this world which is why my followers are at peace with you, but yet involved in a spiritual war where they knew that their goal was to influence people for the gospel of Jesus Christ and to invite people to be a citizen of the kingdom of God. 
And we can't do that by villainizing, labeling, trying to fight what we believe is God's war with the devil's means. And so it's just a reminder that even though if a person were called to die for their country, it's noble for us to assassinate our own witness over the way we conduct ourselves is shameful. And this isn't corrective at all. I'm talking to you just like I'm talking to myself because I know the emotions that come up within me and I know what I felt and I know what I sense and I know what I see and I know there's all kinds of stuff I don't know and I don't know how to feel and stuff I don't see. But I do know that the Bible informs us in times like these and um, I'm grateful for that. And so what I wanna do is I wanna pray. Now, I wanna pray for a couple things. One, I wanna pray for our country and I wanna pray for our leaders as citizens of a country a democracy, we have leaders. And I want to pray that God will bring peace and give wisdom and clarity to the situation that we're navigating through. I want to pray that God gives you a Christian perspective and worldview as you're involved, as you're concerned, as you're informed, as you're interested, but you're not afraid. You're not overly concerned. You're not preoccupied. You're not pessimistic but that he'll give you a Christian perspective and a biblical worldview, that you'll understand that you are grounded in the gospel and that heaven is your home. And I wanna pray for you that you'll be part of the peace that our country so desperately needs. Now, this is kind of where the rubber hits the road because when I pray for things like for our country, it's so easy for us to go, all those people out there need to behave. All those Democrats need to stop it. All those Republicans need to hush. If they would just stop, we'd be fine. And the reality is if I would just stop, we'd be fine. If I would act like Christ and you would act like Christ, we would act like Christ. The gospel would continue to spread. Our country would continue to be influenced. And all of a sudden we would see the kind of change that Jesus Christ brought himself. When Jesus came into the world, a political mess doesn't begin to describe it, but it was one man with a message and he passed that message to another who in turn passed it to another. And the message, which was his mission became a movement and eventually it affected the entire world. And the moment we take our eyes off the man and the mission and the message, we step out of the movement and we become part of the problem. And so we have to be careful and guard against it. And that's how I'm praying for you. So I want us to pray together as we get started with optimism because God is in control and he sees what's going on and he knows and he cares. And he's the one we trust. My trust is not in America. As much as I love being an American, my confidence is in Jesus Christ. And no matter what happens, he cannot be defeated. So I wanna pray for you. Father, thank you for my friends. And I pray that as we get started this morning, I pray for the things I just mentioned. They were already really prayers. I mentioned them out loud and you listened to them. And Many of us agree with them. I pray for the confusion that many of us have. When we get angry, we want to act. We want to react. And we have a responsibility as citizens to be informed and to vote our conscience based on principles that scripture inform us about. But it's so easy for us to allow our passion to become anger, for us to assassinate our own witness and in turn, destroy the witness of Christians in the church. So easy to lose the right to speak out for Jesus Christ in a marketplace of ideas. So easy to act in the way the world acts. And they see no difference in a person who calls themselves a follower of Jesus Christ. 
So I pray that the change that we desperately want to see begins with me, with us, with each individual, with the conversations that we have, the emails that we send, the things that we post, that we are people who choose to unite, not to divide, that we are for more than we are against and that you'll lead us through. I pray for opportunities for us to be able to share where our strength comes from. It comes from you. I pray that you would remove fear where there's fear, doubt where there's doubt. Give us an optimistic, enthusiastic, joyful perspective about the life we live because you're in control. And I pray these things with absolute confidence in you and you alone. I pray them in the name of Jesus. Amen.